Well, now to our feature story tonight. And a Sydney family is campaigning for tighter gun laws after suffering an unimaginable tragedy. I learnt about six weeks before she killed him that she'd developed an interest in guns. I feared that interest might have been because she wanted to harm Dad. Michelle and Dianthe's dad, Larlan Fernando, was shot dead almost two years ago. The woman who pulled the trigger was their mentally ill sister, Shamin. On the day Larlan was killed, Shamin managed to steal a semi-automatic pistol from the gun club where she was a probationary member. Somehow, at the end of the tournament, she had the gun in her handbag. She also had the remaining 30 rounds of ammunition in her handbag and she left the club. She then lured her dad to her home. But when he got there, my sister waited for an opportunity and she killed him with that firearm. Sadly, Shamin had been suffering chronic schizophrenia, which created delusions that her dad was behind a deadly conspiracy against her. She was found not guilty of murder by reason of mental illness and committed to a mental health unit. Shamin is not a killer. Shamin is a wonderful sister, a wonderful aunt, a wonderful daughter, and a wonderful friend. This is not her. This is her illness. Despite that illness, the 43-year-old was given access to guns and trained in how to use them at a Sydney shooting range. I honestly believed that she would never be able to get a gun. But a law change in 2008 meant that unlicensed shooters can handle guns under direct supervision at approved ranges without undergoing criminal or medical background checks. The former Labor government cut a deal with the Shooters Party in 2008 to water down our firearms laws and allow for someone without a licence, without any police checks, to basically just walk in off the street, go to a gun club and have access to semi-automatic handguns and other weaponry. They simply fill in a form. Uh, they must answer six questions in relation to their personal history, covering criminal activities to mental health. If they answer yes to any of the questions on the P650 form, they are not allowed to participate in any shooting activities whatsoever. But the answers on the form aren't checked. Once again, we have to rely upon the, uh, the honesty of the, the person filling the form in. Shamin ticked no to the question asking if she had a mental illness. The only thing that stood between her and a firearm was a lying in a questionnaire that was never checked. These sisters are now pushing for the law to be changed, starting an online petition to put pressure on New South Wales politicians. You rely upon your government to keep you safe. The police minister is looking into tightening the rules, a move some clubs worry could make it harder for the sport to survive. The time involved in vetting every intending shooter uh, could run up to three months, which would make it very hard for someone to actually come and draw sport. I'm not against guns, I'm not against gun clubs, I'm not against any of that. I just believe that people should be vetted before they hold a gun. And they're determined to make that happen. I'd like to see an end to unlicensed shooting throughout the country. I will fight as long and as hard as it takes. Now, if you are distressed and need to talk to someone, you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14.